Well hello and another very warm welcome back all my YouTube browsers and subscribers and uh, slightly better news uh, with regards to lockdown this morning I can see that uh, the UK government has now announced that uh, many of our outdoor sporting events will be open to the public again by the middle uh, of the summer so that's uh, good news maybe we can all uh, meet up at a classic race event somewhere soon uh, in the UK so uh, we're looking forward to get back out there and uh, seeing more of these old classic dirt bikes and uh, doing some racing. So up until then I'm going to continue now with uh, we're going to take a look at a couple of very nice British made Greaves Griffin machines. Now both these bikes belong to uh, Joss Goddard and uh, we're going to take a look at uh, two of Joss's uh, machines in this video. So without any further delay let's just jump straight into his first machine. Now this particular pair of Greaves Griffin bikes of uh, Joss Goddard were a nice pair of British classics that I captured at the Cumberland Grand National Scramble back in 2018. Now we already know that uh, these are not uh, fully original bikes as uh, Joss has fitted a few upgraded parts to both of his machines although essentially they're still a couple of uh, nice Greaves Griffin classics from the late uh, 1960s or early 1970s. Now these Greaves Griffin bikes were launched in 1969 and were of course the replacement for the older Greaves Challengers that sported uh, the older uh, I-beam banana style leading link uh, front forks. Although if you wanted you could still order your uh, Greaves Griffin with those uh, older banana style uh, leading link uh, front forks as they were still an option on the Griffins in that year. Now these conventional style uh, fork stanchions were Italian made Serianis which were uh, decent enough forks for their time although uh, some riders still preferred to have the older uh, leading link uh, suspension systems. Now unfortunately I'm certainly no uh, Greaves expert on these bikes but I think this could be a 250 or a 360 bike uh, due to it having that uh, single exhaust port on the barrel because I do remember that it was the bigger 380 bikes that had the twin port uh, twin header pipes that uh, went over the top of the motor and then joined onto a single tailpipe on the right hand side of the bike. Now it's also said that uh, the main reason these Greaves Griffin motors had such a big cylinder fin area is because a lot of these Griffins were aimed primarily at the American market and they were to be used in desert racing and uh, these huge fins were uh, designed to help aid the cooling of the motor in those extremely hot uh, climates and as far as I'm aware it did uh, actually work uh, quite well. But these Greaves uh, motors were very good power plants for a motocross machine from the early 1970s and uh, they had a separate uh, gearbox that bolted onto the rear of the crankcase. Now some people say that this was uh, quite an antiquated system when most off-road bikes at the time had their gearboxes inside the motor uh, by uh, this point but nonetheless this older configuration still worked very well and was reasonably uh, reliable. Now, of course that single exhaust uh, header pipe ran over the top of the motor to keep it out of uh, harm's way and it then connected to this uh, tailpipe at the rear uh, of the bike. Now most of these uh, Griffin machines had a strong uh, steel swing arm on the rear and uh, Jossie's bikes also uh, had a modified uh, chain guide and rear brake uh, linkage rod fitted. Now normally these uh, bikes would have been fitted with a fiberglass fuel tank back in the day and it would have been painted in a multitude of different uh, types of colours although I think uh, this particular tank could be from a later Griffin as I think uh, some of the 1973 bikes had uh, this type of uh, alloy fuel tank like the bikes that were made 
in uh, collaboration with the Queen's uh, University uh, Belfast. Now, uh, Joss again has made some uh, upgrades to his uh, front end by fitting these new uh, billet alloy handlebar clamps and a set of modern handlebars. But uh, despite this bike having a few non-original parts fitted on it, including uh, different rear shocks and uh, maybe those plastic front and rear mud guards, which of course originally would have been uh, made of alloy, but this is still a lovely uh, looking bike and uh, quite quick on the track as well because I've seen this bike in action and it's uh, certainly no slouch when Joss is in the saddle. Now this is uh, Jossie's other Greaves Griffin, uh, complete this time with the original fiberglass uh, fuel tank. Now I'm not entirely sure if this is uh, Jossie's standby race bike as he tends to ride the black bike uh, more often than uh, this model so I'll assume that uh, this very nice example is just his uh, backup bike. Now again, I think that this is a 250 or maybe even a 360, but my guess is that it is a 360 model and uh, I'm surprised that you don't see more of these old Greaves bikes at classic events nowadays because uh, they were good all-round uh, off-roaders. Uh, that was of course up until the Japanese flooded the market in the early 1970s with uh, millions of cheaper and uh, more affordable bikes. Now once again another pair of, of Italian made Seriani front forks which were a very popular fitment on a lot of bikes from the 1960s and early 1970s and Seriani uh, supplied many British motorcycle manufacturers with these front suspension systems back in the day so they were hugely popular and they worked uh, very well. And again, that uh, Griffin exhaust pipe that uh, goes up and over the top of the motor, which uh, when you think of it was pretty advanced uh, for its day when you consider that a lot of motorcycles these days still use a variation of this under the seat system uh, to tuck their race pipes uh, out of uh, harm's way. Now this uh, Griffin is uh, still fitted with its uh, stock Amal concentric carburetor which was uh, a standard fitting on these uh, griffins back in the day and they had a conventional uh, wet uh, multi-plate clutch as well which was uh, all metal as I remember and uh, they also had a four speed gearbox. Now again on uh, Jossie's bike he's replaced the original alloy mudguards with these much more uh, durable uh, plastic ones. Now, uh, the fuel tank on this bike is an original fiberglass item, as of course uh, is the bike's side panels, but uh, Greaves sold these machines in a lot of uh, bright metal flake colours uh, back in the 1970s, and you could have your Griffin in uh, red, you could have it in gold, you can have it in green, and even of course in this nice uh, blue uh, motif. But uh, overall, these single-cylinder two-stroke Greaves engines were still uh, good motors for their time. They had plenty of grunt, and uh, when you had one of these uh, set up just right, uh, a good rider could achieve uh, decent results in them, uh, racing against more modern uh, competition. But uh, this particular blue metal flake uh, paint job on Jossie's bike uh, looks to me to be period correct for its day as uh, Greaves were certainly bold enough with their bike colour choices for the early 1970s. And once again that very strong steel swing arm and it looks like uh, Joss has also fitted and upgraded the chain guide on his second bike uh, just to keep that drive chain in line with both the front and rear drive sprockets. But uh, in 1973 Greaves uh, then teamed up with Gordon Blair who was a two-stroke uh, engineer that was working at the Queen's University in Belfast and his task 
was to try and improve the power output of these uh, Griffins and to be fair he did manage to up the power from 33 horsepower to 44 horsepower and uh, in 1973 they then launched the Greaves uh, Griffin 380 QUB which of course was in association with the Queen's University at Belfast but of course by this time it was really too little too late as the big four Japanese manufacturers were now uh, starting to dominate the market and these British made Griffin sales uh, suffered as a result. Although it's still Thanks to the likes of uh, Joss and many of the other Greaves owners that still keep the name of this once iconic British brand alive by uh, keeping these bikes running and racing on the racetracks around the UK. And of course if it wasn't for their dedication and enthusiasm for these Greaves machines we'd just be looking at these old timers in museums and magazine articles. Well, I hope you enjoyed that uh, very nice couple of uh, British-made Greaves Griffins there belonging to Joss uh, Goddard. Not a pair of uh, fully original bikes, but nevertheless certainly worth a few minutes here on Classic Dirt Bike TV. Okay, coming up in my next video posting, we're going classic racing once again and we're going to showcase some uh, racing footage from the Scottish Classic Motorcycle Racing Club's event that was held at Forfar uh, a few years back so I do hope you'll uh, join me for that and uh, after we've showcased that racing footage we will be uh, going back to look at more of those fantastic uh, paddock bikes that I know you uh, view and love and uh, this will be uh, volume 5 which will be coming up uh, very shortly so I do hope you'll return to see that up until then everybody still stay positive and uh, things are looking brighter with regards to us all getting back out there racing with our old uh, classic bikes and I hope to meet up with a few of you before uh, the end of the racing year. So once again thanks for viewing my channel and uh, we'll talk again very soon when we all return to Classic Dirt Bike TV.